This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello everyone and welcome. In this lecture, I will be providing a simplified explanation about how to treat the wastewater. We will see what are the major components of a wastewater treatment plant. First, let's start by understanding the wastewater characteristics. So what are the major components and pollutants of raw sewage? First, the physical characteristics. So a raw wastewater is full of solids or what is also commonly known as TSS or total suspended solids that we need to highly reduce. Also, a raw sewage has a, a high turbidity and this is due to the uh, solids components. Also, we have a, a, a colored water and we need to reach a transparent and non-turbid water as an uh, end result. Also, we have some bad odors. Our treated water must have no odor at all. Let's move to the chemical characteristics. A raw sewage has uh, some uh, nutrients, uh, some high level of uh, total phosphorus, so for example, of also uh, total uh, nitrogen that we need to highly reduce. Uh, it can also have uh, some metal. We have some uh, gases like methane. The pH must be uh, a neutral pH, so uh, uh, a value around 7. And uh, also a, a, a raw uh, a wastewater has some organic matters, what is uh, commonly known as a BOD or biological oxygen demand that we also have to highly reduce and also uh, something else called COD or chemical oxygen demand also uh, these two organic matters need to be highly reduced finally we have the biological components mainly microorganisms and some dangerous uh, pathogens like the bacteria helminths uh, viruses also we have to uh, provide a, a treated water that is safe from all these pathogens treating wastewater is a, a complex process and it involves many stages we start by uh, bar screening uh, which is the physical removal of any coarse material so let's say uh, a tree branch stones etc then grit removal so also uh, the removal of other coarse material that might be sand, eggshells, uh, etc. Then we go through the primary clarifier, which is actually a sedimentation tank to reduce the suspended solids. So this is where uh, the solids settle down. And as you can see, we have the production of uh, some sludge, which is full of uh, suspended solids, and we have to treat the sludge. So practically, we have another also treatment a plant as you can see here this treatment plant is only to treat the solids the sludge that is being produced in the wastewater treatment plant then the clarified water so the clear water so as you can see here in blue will undergo a, a biological treatment whether uh, through aeration so in this case we are uh, injecting air of course here we can have many processes we can uh, have for example the activated sludge uh, the mbbr treatment system the mbr etc we have many technologies to highly reduce the organic matters and the pollutants and also we can have uh, anaerobic systems so without aeration it can be for example through uasb so some technologies that do not involve aeration. Then we have a secondary clarifier or uh, another sedimentation process. So after the primary clarifier, we have a, a secondary clarifier. And also we have the production of uh, uh, some sludge. As you can see, some of it 
is wasted, what is commonly known as the Wasted Activated Sludge or WAS, and some of it is returned, what is commonly known as the RAS or the Returned Activated Sludge, which is in this case we are using the ASP or the Activated Sludge process. So as I have said, uh, at this stage, the number four stage, usually can uh, involve other technologies and techniques. And finally, we have uh, the disinfection, the wastewater disinfection. It can be through chlorination and also it can be through UV uh, systems. Then this wastewater is fully treated. It can be safely disposed. In this case, uh, uh, it is disposed in a river, for example, or it can be also reused. This depends on your local regulations and also on the uh, quality of the treated water. Now we will cover in details the uh, treatment stages. We will start by the pretreatment. Usually the first stage in any wastewater treatment plant is the screening. And the purpose of the screening is to protect the wastewater treatment plant components or the parts of uh, our treatment plant from being damaged uh, by removing the coarse material. So we don't really want uh, stones, brushes and other debris to enter into our wastewater treatment plant. Otherwise, we might face some damages within our uh, piping systems, within our mechanical uh, systems also. For this, we can use fine screening or coarse screening. Course screening simply involve some uh, bars that, as you can see in this picture, we place these bars uh, into the uh, a, a channel, and any course material will be trapped into uh, these bars. And we have uh, another more sophisticated technique, which is the fine screening. Here we have some mechanical components, and we have, uh, as the name uh, uh, suggests very uh, fine uh, uh, screening bars that will trap very small uh, coarse materials that will be uh, collected and disposed. For more information about screening, you can go through the already posted uh, screening lecture. A second pretreatment process is the grid chamber. And in this case, we will eliminate a smaller grit material like sand, eggshells, seeds, bone chips. And also the main purpose is still to protect the pipelines and channels from clogging. We have many uh, uh, grit chambers, technologies. We can use this vortex uh, grit chamber or even the aerated uh, chambers in order to uh, remove these grit particles. Next, we have to use an equalization tank. So after the screening and the grit chamber, now we have to use the equalization tank. Now let's try to understand the purpose of this tank. We have this graph and uh, this graph is about uh, a typical uh, human consumption of water in a day. So we have the uh, flow rate or the water usage per hour versus the hours. So during the night, a typical human being uh, is sleeping. We don't really have a, a water usage. At around 6 to 7 a.m., a typical human being wakes up and we have a massive uh, water usage, whether uh, for uh, uh, toilet flushing, uh, shower, for example, dishwashing, washing mach machine, etc. So we have a first peak. Then a typical human being leaves the house for a work or a college, school, etc. So we have a drop of water usage. Then uh, during the evening, a typical human being comes back to his house and we have another peak of water usage. Then during the night, the water consumption is highly decreased. So as you can see, we have high fluctuations of water usage during the day and we don't really want these fluctuations to affect our wastewater treatment plant. We want an equal amount of water to enter the wastewater treatment plant at each hour. 
For this, we have to use an equalization tank. So it is practically a simple tank where we collect the wastewater and we have these pumps that will pump equal amounts of water every uh, short period. In this uh, tank, we have also some uh, coarse bubble aeration. We uh, just pump some air to minimize the odors and avoid the sedimentation of uh, the solid particles. Also, for more information, you can check the lecture of the equalization tank that describes in detail this process. After the equalization tank, we have the primary treatment. Now we start our treatment process. Usually, a primary treatment consists of a simple sedimentation tank. So this is a physical treatment. The heavy materials that can settle down by gravity will form the sludge and the floating material will go up and they will form the scum and only the cleared water will pass into the second stage. So in this stage, we will get rid of the suspended solids, so the TSS that will form the sludge and the sludge will undergo further treatment and also we will get rid of the fat, oil and grease, FOG, that is practically the scum and only the cleared water will go into the secondary phase or the secondary treatment. So this is uh, basically this uh, uh, primary treatment or the primary clarifier. What you are seeing here is a rectangular uh, primary clarifier. This is uh, equipped with a mechanical scrapper. So what you are seeing here, it is a mechanical scrapper. So these are bars that will move the accumulated sludge into this hopper. So anything that was accumulated, so the sludge that was accumulated will be pushed by these uh, mechanical scrappers and they will accumulate in this hopper and uh, the sludge will be later on pumped for further treatment. So this is uh, usually used for a uh, big wastewater treatment plants. Also, we have a circular configuration of uh, a primary clarifier. Next, we have the secondary treatment, and this is the bulk, let's say, of a wastewater treatment plant. The main pur purpose is to highly reduce the organic components that can be the BOD and the COD. So we want a high reduction of these two organic components and also some uh, nutrients like total phosphorus and total nitrogen, so nitrates, uh, uh, nitrites, so nitrogen uh, uh, components, because these two can highly uh, deplete oxygen uh, of a river. For example, if this wastewater is later on disposed in a river, we might face uh, eutrophication and oxygen depletion of this river. Nowadays, we have many options for the secondary treatment. We can go for uh, aerobic uh, treatment, so anything that involves oxygen. For example, the MBBR technology. So we will be injecting oxygen into the water and here also the MBBR uh, uses some media that are placed uh, into the water. And the whole concept of the secondary treatment, regard regardless uh, the technology used, we want to create the ultimate condition for the proliferation of some good bacteria. These bacteria will get starved and they will eat the organic matters and help in the reduction of the nutrients. So whether you are using aerobic or anaerobic uh, systems, we have al always the same concept, creating these good bacteria that will eliminate the organic matters. So for aerobic systems, we can use the MBBR technology. We can also use the activated sludge, uh, the MBR, etc. When we say aerobic, it means injecting air. So we are using air blowers and air diffusers. We can also use anaerobic uh, technologies. So no air is being injected. For example, the UASB technology. So in this case, we don't need air browsers, for example. 
Finally, the last stage, which is the tertiary treatment. And in this stage, we will disinfect the water. Whether using UV lights that involve no chemical addition to the wastewater or even uh, uh, chlorination. So adding chlorine in uh, our water, whether in uh, a, a, the gas form, as you can see here, we have a uh, gas chlorination or in the liquid form, we can prepare a, a chlorine solution and inject it. Or even we can add chlorine tablets if we are dealing with a small wastewater treatment system. So these are the main stages of a, a wastewater treatment plant. We can expect uh, uh, this uh, final result. So a clear, odorless and colorless water with highly reduced uh, organic matters, pollutants and nutrients. This water can be safely disposed we can dispose it into a river, for example, or even reused. Thank you for watching this lecture. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.